Today I'm going to talk about some games that I've been playing lately, as I like to do on my channel. I love coming in here and telling you about good games. But I'm also going to talk about some games that I just can't get into. But I'm trying. I'm trying to get into some games, but just can't. Tell me down below which games you are trying to get into, but you just simply can't. Now, lately I have actually been playing a little bit on PC. I have now a better computer, so finally in my life I have started The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, which is probably a game that you have already heard a lot about, and it is an open-world RPG by Bethesda from 2006. It is such a classic, so you know, as much as I loved Skyrim, it is really surprising actually that I've never really got into Oblivion and played that to the fullest. I started playing Elder Scrolls back in 2005 or 6. Actually, I started with Morrowind because my computer couldn't handle Oblivion when that was released, so I played Morrowind instead. And I loved it. And you all know the rest of the story. When Skyrim came out, that became my most favorite and best game that I had ever played, and I've been playing it on and off for all these years. But I just never played Oblivion. <laughs> How does that even happen? It just slipped away from me because of computer problems back then. And I have never owned an Xbox before either. And at that time I didn't even have a PlayStation 3. So, you know, Oblivion just slipped through the cracks in a lot of ways for me. That is why I never played it. But now I am. So this time I'm giving Oblivion a brand new chance and I have modded it a tiny bit on my computer to have just some quality of life features, just light modding. And I can already say that Oblivion is so special and it just gets better the more and more I play it and understand everything, like the magic and how everything is set up. It is actually a super complex game. I'm so late to discovering this, but you know, you can't blame me. I am finally now playing it and discovering it. There's so much voice acting in this game, and actually I love the NPC AI. It is sort of stupid, but I love it. It brings just more charm to the whole experience with the game, in my opinion. The quests are very well written and the world is really beautiful, actually, to be a 2006 game. So I'm having a lot of fun in Oblivion. I'm doing the Dark Brotherhood quest lines and I'm also gonna jump into the Thieves Guild and you know the Mages Guild. It is actually surprisingly similar to Skyrim. It's weird, okay? I'm coming from Skyrim and then jumping into Oblivion. It should have been the other way around. I can truly feel that this is a prequel to Skyrim. I mean, you level up in what you do the most, just like in Skyrim. And I like that leveling system. So you can level up whether that be in swords or magic or marksmanship. You get better in what you actually do. I really feel committed now into completing Oblivion and I'm really enjoying my experience so far with Oblivion. It is out on PC, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. I have no idea why this isn't out on the Switch. It would run super well on the Switch by far. So yeah, I can already recommend Oblivion. <laughs> but you have already probably played it. Now I told you guys that I would talk more about ReCore. ReCore Definitive Edition. It is actually a game that got suggested to me by someone on my Discord server, Tarek. And you know what? From now on, I trust his judgment because we have similar tastes in games. <laughs> so if you feel like you have similar taste in games as me, please suggest games to me. I often listen and I often check out what you guys are commenting about. Are commenting about. <laughs> ReCore is unfortunately an Xbox and PC exclusive, but I'm playing it on my PC. I also have it on Game Pass. I mean, I have it on Game Pass on PC and Xbox, and the save files are crossed over. It doesn't matter where I play it. Another reason why I am praising Game Pass. If you haven't already, you should check out my Xbox first impression video. My first experience with Game Pass, Xbox, anything in that realm. I'm very happy with that video. But anyways, I'm playing ReCore on PC and it is smooth as butter. It is an action adventure and platforming game released in 2016 actually. 
You play as a jewel, this girl who wakes up from a planned cryo sleep to a world where things didn't go as planned. Robots were supposed to clean up the planet while you slept, but you woke up to them having gone haywired instead. That sort of thing. Gameplay reminds me of Sword Art Fatal Bullet, actually, as it is very third person shootery. Controls are quick and smooth and sometimes you have to solve the puzzles, just simple puzzles. The game also has a simple crafting system and areas that sometimes feel too big for their own good. But I like it. I like this game. It is a cute, cute game. And if you have Game Pass, that equals free. It is free for you if you have Game Pass. Now over to some games that I just can't get into, but I'm trying. Let me know if you can relate to this, but it's like for a year now, people have told me in the comment section, you should play Dragon Quest XI. I'm listening to you guys. Everyone is saying that it is a great game. It's a Square Enix game from 2017 and it is out everywhere on all consoles. But is it just me or is Dragon Quest XI really hard to get into? Because it's probably just me. I don't know, there's just nothing that really sucks me in or hooks me. I mean, I'm trying my best, I'm going back to the game and I just can't feel really invested. So maybe there is something wrong with me. I've gotten to the desert town and done the horse race things, if you're wondering where I am at in the game. Do you guys have any tips and tricks for me for playing the game or anything? Let me know. I also feel like Dragon Quest XI on the Switch actually has quite blurry graphics. The 3D, just blurry. The Switch blurriness, everyone. Can we talk a bit about that? I love the Switch and I love the portability of the Switch. It is so convenient with my life. But in the end, the graphics are better on PlayStation 4 and also on Xbox One and on PC. It's just the weakest point of the Switch. Mm. I mean, dedicated games for the Switch, like Astral Chain, wherever that game is. The graphics in that, it is so crisp and, and, you know, you can see that it is sharp on the screen. But ported games like this, like multi-console sort of games, I have a feeling that when they are ported, they just look really blurry. And that puts me off. <laughs> it really does. So yeah. I'm gonna continue to give Dragon Quest XI more of a chance and I would like to know what you think of the game. Leave a comment down below about that. Now some other games that I have been playing a tiny bit on my Switch and I just wanted to talk a bit about them because this was given to me as a review code. Thank you. And it is called And Listen Up. It has the longest title I've ever seen on a video game. It is called, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Question mark. That is the title of the game. So yeah, I've been playing that a tiny bit because I got it as a review code. I thought it looked interesting, but I'm not blown away by it. Uh, I can immediately tell that this company does not have the biggest budget for creating this game. So I want to say that the game is really mediocre. It doesn't completely suck, but it isn't entirely good either. And I think the price point is also incorrect. It is an adaptation from the Japanese manga and anime with the same name. It is an action RPG, top-down view, and outside of dungeons, the game is only menu-based. And you know what I feel about menu-based stuff. I always love to have a hub world instead of just a menu when navigating between, you know, levels of worlds. So it just feels incredibly cheap. It's a dungeon crawler and combat is very simple. I'm not sure about combat complexity further into the game though, but I think this game is only for fans. Only fans. Kidding. Now another game that I got as a review code. That is actually a new game made by Gust, the people behind the Atelier games. And that is called Fairy Tale. So this is a, another review code of another adaptation from anime and manga with the same name. The only reason that I'm playing this is because it is a game by Gust, the developers behind the Atelier games. <laughs> and you know what? I can really feel that. It is very similar in the way that the game is built up sort of to the Atelier series' games. But the thing is, I know nothing about Fairy Tale or the universe or the characters or the story. So it was really confusing. I don't feel like the game really explained a bunch of the lore or the story to a new player. 
and someone new to the, the franchise fairy tale. So this game also feels like that it is for fans only, fans of the manga, anime. It has a hub place, it has cities, quests, and turn-based combat, and a bunch of dialogue. And the graphics are also very colorful, with a contrasty outline on everything. So, you know, you can feel that it is the same developers as the Atelier games. But when I started this game on my Switch, the game was actually struggling a lot with the frame rate. Running through the first city was really, really chugging. It was not a good first impression. I want to like this game, but so far I don't feel very interested. But we will see. So in other news everyone, and this is kind of embarrassing and funny, I found my Animal Crossing Switch save. It was buried deep within the shell of the old Switch. But you know, I deleted my user account, my user profile, the little, you know, my user from that Switch and I gave that Switch to my cousin. But the thing is, out of curiosity, I recreated my profile. I'm re-logged into my profile and created my own Nintendo ID profile into his Switch. And then I downloaded from my account Animal Crossing. And when I logged into Animal Crossing, it said, we already have an island on this Switch. So there's my island. But it's it's the same story still because it's gone. I've given that switch away now and Nintendo does not want to help me <laughs> to move that old island to my new switch. So I'm stuck either way. They were like, no, we will not transfer that over to you because the actual transfer service, when you need it, they don't give it to you out of nowhere. You have to prove that you have lost your switch or broken your switch or it was stolen. So me giving the switch to my cousin, that didn't apply. It's gone forever, I've given up. And another tiny news, in, in other news, is that uh, it is a while back now, but I just never said it officially on my channel. I did a live panel for Uplink, which is the Long Island Retro Gaming Convention. These guys. I'm planning on uploading the entire panel to my Patreons. Another thing that happened a little while back is that I was on a collab video with Metal Jesus Rocks. So that is also fun, link to that down below. Now that was all for today, it was a really random video anyways, but uh, some PC games that I've been playing and some Switch games that I can't get into and some, you know, mediocre Switch games and some news at the end there, so. You never know what you're gonna get when you click on an Isha gaming video, that's for sure. So, thank you so much for watching everyone, and I will see you later!